you know, we were really into Kung Fu, both practiced yoga, um, you know, I've done meditation and interested in Buddhism and we're into, into Taoism, that, that sort of, those philosophies and stuff. So we definitely brought that to the table when we started creating the show. But really, you know, it started with a, a sketch Brian did of a monkey robot and this kid with an arrow on his head and and uh, he did some sketches of a just bison clouds, type yeah. creature that became Appa. But you know, at the time we didn't we didn't have a story. We were just like, this is interesting. He was just sort of like this here. air shepherd. He was up in the sky, you know. Yeah, and uh, I was I, I was kind of into this the, the whole story of Shackleton and the guys trapped on the South Pole back in the day, uh, and so those ideas kind of combined with Brian having this like major revelation during a yoga class one night <laughs> of like these fire people attacking this group of people on the you these know south pole people, south yeah. pole and stuff and, and this air kid is the one who can yeah them. so kind of through that we're like oh well if there's fire and water there's there would be other nations air there would be earth nation and so that's kind of where the the idea of the four elements nations came from four element theory is in many cultures including uh ancient buddhism Mike and I just, it was just this universal thing and it's something you connect with really quickly. You could say one or two of the elements and people fill in the blanks. And um, so we liked that, that the world, you just, you got it. It started with making this pilot, which was pretty much me and Brian and some animators in Korea. And, and then we got picked up for the, the series and it's like, well, man, we got to make you know, at the time it was 13, and then later 20 episodes. And then 61. <laughs> <laughs> we had to bring on some some great talent, and so we first turned to a lot of people we had worked with in the past. Aaron Ehaz, who became the head writer, we had worked with on Mission Hill. Well, Nickelodeon wanted something with magic and, and action, but it's a kids' network, and you know we couldn't just have straight up violence, and, and that's honestly not something Mike and I were interested in anyway. But you know, the the world of like the kind of wizards and magic and wands and stuff, it never really made a lot of sense to me. It just seemed to me too many loopholes. I didn't understand the rules or limitations. Mike and I both felt that, let's do something really physical with the magic, you know? It's magic, but we won't even call it that. It'll just be an extension of the person's chi into the element. But there were limitations. You know, they had to be trained and they had to work and earn these skills. They weren't just like, I'm granted with these powers and I can do things. We arrived at the idea pretty early on, oh, let's use traditional, you know, some kind of kung fu. But we were like, let's just pick one that'll look good in animation. And, and thought that Northern Shaolin was a good traditional Chinese martial art that had really big, you know, balletic movements, really dynamic stuff, a lot of jumping, falling. Thought this would be a good style. So I found all the teachers I could find in the area ended up with Sifu Kisu. He had the idea that each nation would have its own style. We kept Northern Shaolin for the Fire Nation. Um, we used Bagua for the Air Nation. There's a lot of like, I say like tornado power, a lot of spinning. Tai Chi for water, it's this sort of flowing, you know, balance shifting. And then Hungar for Earth, this really strong, like rooted physical one. And I mean, that's it, we, we, we mixed stuff as we needed it, you know, sometimes we needed a move that had a little different flavor, but those were the main ones. The first character we had was Aang, you know, the, the avatar, the main character, and, and we knew, like, after coming up with these other nations and stuff that, you know, he'd have companions on this journey with him, and we really liked the idea of having kind of this brother-sister team alongside him, and that one would be a bender and one wouldn't be. We wanted her to be the waterbender. You know, we wanted to give her an arc as well. We, she needed a place to go. And if she had already lived there and there were all these waterbenders around, uh, we were like, well, she would have already mastered waterbending and what does she need to go on this journey for? You know, so that's where the idea of like, that she was the last one left um, on the South Pole came from. Yeah, and it's, it's been satisfying too to have uh, Katara and other female characters in the show that the fans uh, really connect with. The show is pretty much split 50-50 between boys and girls, men and women who like the show. And it just shows that you can do a cool action adventure show and it doesn't have to exclude, you know, a whole segment of the audience. To go along with all our kind of main bender characters, we wanted the guy who's like, 
kind of the audience point of view in a way where it's like a regular dude who doesn't have any powers hanging out with all these people who do have powers and even though his sister has water bending he's kind of skeptical of it all he's like doesn't really think that that's the answer to the world's problems maybe you know and it's just his smart ass it's just fun to have that sort of like someone always has to say something about everything you know we're huge fans of like big epics and all this stuff. We're all we're also cornballs too. Like we like you yeah, know romance, cheesy teen yeah. romance stuff's always it's always fun and just that dynamic of like being the the young kid and having the crush on the older girl and and she loves you but like a babysitter you know like a little brother or something. Especially a kid who feels out of place in the world and you know she's the first person he has that he really feels a connection with and it's, it's like his new family. And we just always thought Katara would be the heart of the show and Aang would sort of be the spirit. My guess, the thing that really resonated with people are those character arcs. Um, it's not something you get a lot in American TV animation, you know, this continuous storyline where people actually change and they learn, they make mistakes and they have to pay for those mistakes. And yeah, we, we never wanted to be preachy with uh, the spirituality, and we don't claim to be experts in any of this stuff. We're just, we just admire it and, and draw from it in, in our own lives and try to infuse it into the work that we do. And for us, the theme of this, the whole series was always about balance. It was always not about good versus evil. It was about a world out of balance. There were these four cultures that at one time had found a way to coexist, and, and it all fell out of balance and, and that's the avatar's job was it's why he or she is born in each nation in a cycle it's, it's to kind of spread the love and, and keep balance in the world nickelodeon let us do it which is the most incredible part of the story you know we somehow got away with it and told the story we wanted to in the way that we wanted to